Hey guys, so this week we're gonna be taking a look at the Thule Vea 25 liter backpack. And so the spelling of the name of this bag is V-E-A. I'm not sure if that's Vea or Via, but we have looked at the in-case Via in the past. So to avoid any confusion, I will be referring to this as the Vea for the remainder of this video. And so we've looked at quite a few Thule bags here on the channel in the past. I've always been a big fan of the quality and style that they bring. So whenever I see bags from them that I haven't seen in the past, I always get very curious. So I was browsing on Amazon and came across this bag, which looked like a really kind of stylish and versatile bag. And it looked quite different from a lot of the bags that I'd seen from them in the past. So I went ahead and ordered it just to test it out and see what it had to offer. And I've been using it for the past couple of weeks. And so far it's been a pretty cool bag. There were a few things that I wasn't too crazy about. But overall, I thought the bag was really great and kept with Thule's ethos of having really great design and quality, most importantly. So we got a lot of cool things to cover with this bag and I'm excited to share it with you guys. So let's just jump in and take a closer look at the Thule Vea 25 liter backpack. So starting out with the outside of the bag, the first thing that stuck out to me is just how different this looked from a lot of the other Thule bags that I've seen in the past. It has a very sleek style, I would say. It's a little more, I guess, fashionable than what I would have said about other Thule bags in the past. So really like the look overall, just a very clean, minimalist style to it. Definitely feels like it's gonna fit in well in a more professional environment or for walking around the city. It just looks really nice and clean. And as with all the Thule bags that we've looked at in the past, the build quality feels really nice. It feels super sturdy, like it's gonna hold up well over the longer term. The bag seems to be made out of a nice polyester and 800D nylon mixture. So it feels really solid to me. It also feels like the material is gonna offer a good amount of water resistance and keep the items inside protected. I was happy to see that the bag has really nice YKK zippers all around to offer additional protection and just a nice premium feel. I really like the zipper pulls and the nice coloring on the buckle. So just a really well-made bag all around as we've come to expect from Thule. And so the first thing I'll mention is because of the really clean exterior and minimalistic style that the bag is going for, it does suffer a little bit in the way of organizational options, especially on the outside. So the way this bag was marketed on the site, in my opinion, was as kind of a daily and gym bag. So it does have a separate shoe compartment that we're gonna be talking about in a little bit. And it does have the ability to store something like a yoga mat on top of the bag here, which I'll also mention. But one thing that stuck out to me is that it doesn't have any sort of specific pocket for a water bottle. And I know I always talk about the water bottle pockets on my daily bag, but in particular on this one, it was very strange that there was no water bottle compartment on the outside because this seems to be such a gym focused bag. So. Not a deal breaker, but I still would have really liked to see some area to store the water bottle compartment on the outside. This is also a bag that I think would be great for people who commute to work on a bike, who typically take a change of clothes with them or need to store a separate pair of shoes for cycling. The bag does have that capacity, so having that water bottle compartment on the outside would have just added some additional versatility to a nice looking bag. But I know there's always a balance between keeping a bag very minimalistic and sleek and adding that functionality. And so I was happy to see that the bag does have one quick access compartment on the flap which is really big. I was impressed with how much I was actually able to fit into this compartment. And so one thing with these type of compartments, as we've seen in bags like the Boundary Prima system or the Burton Tinder, as we mentioned earlier, the more full this compartment on the flap gets, the, the tougher it is to expand the compartment out to allow you to use more capacity in the bag. So currently I have a lot of stuff in this compartment. That's why it's kind of bolting out like this. But if I didn't have as much stuff, I would have a little bit more versatility to use the space under to hold something a little bit thicker like a yoga mat. But diving into this main compartment here, as you can see, it has a nice weather guarded zipper here, which offers a fair amount of water resistance to keep whatever you have in here well protected. And so opening the compartment up, the first thing that stands out is this really soft felt green lining that the bag has on both sides of this compartment. So I really love to see that in a compartment like this, as it's an area where you might put some of your more delicate items like your phone, where you want to have that additional protection against scratching. So really nice material here. And then in general, I love just that this is a huge pocket where you can throw in a variety of items. And so the first item I'll call out here is my Beats Solo Wireless 2. So I was super impressed that I was able to fit that in there as that is one of the bulkier items that I'll typically carry with me on a day-to-day -day basis. Next up, I have my Blue Pop portable Bluetooth speaker and power bank that I like to carry with me that fits in there very easily. And then the last item I have in here is my Ray-Ban sunglasses with their case. As you can see, lots of space. Those are all fairly bulky items that I had in there and I even have a leftover space. So if I'd wanted to throw one or two more smaller items in there, I think I would have been able to make that fit. So really nice versatile pocket here. Love the implementation 
and the simplicity that it offers. So moving on to the straps and the back paneling, if you've seen any of the Thule videos we've done in the past, this will look very familiar. The bag has some really nice, solid feeling straps, has a good amount of thickness and padding. The material that they've used on the straps has a nice amount of mesh and elevation here to provide a good amount of airflow as you're wearing this throughout the day. The straps themselves have a good width. I was glad to see how wide these are to prevent the bag from digging into your shoulders while you're wearing it with a lot of weight. And then I also like the contoured shape of the strap. This style of strap always fits my body type very well. I find it very comfortable to use. And so I really love to see that they chose to go with this here. On the straps, the bag has an adjustable sternum strap to add just a little bit more support for the weight that you may be carrying with you. And then here on the strap, I've included one of my new favorite accessories that I've been using, and that is the Hero Clip, which I've seen featured in a few different bag reviewers' videos. So I went ahead and got myself one to try out, and I have to say I've been surprised with how much I've been loving carrying this around with me. It's just a carabiner that expands out that allows you to hang your bag up from a variety of places. So this is something I wish I knew existed much sooner because I hate putting my bags down in places like the bathroom. So it's really nice that you can expand this out, that it has such a compact shape, and that it allows you to hang your bag from so many different locations. So if you're looking for something to hang, not just your bag up, for, but anything that is a little bit bigger that you need a little bit more flexibility in how you can hang up, I definitely recommend you check this out. It's a very cool accessory. And then moving on to the back, Back paneling there is a good amount of padding here unfortunately the material on the back doesn't seem to provide as much airflow as the material used on the straps I wish they had used the same thing on both areas just as I mentioned this does seem like a bag that might be used by somebody on a bike or going to the gym so it would be nice to have that additional airflow to prevent the moisture from building up so quickly on your back but still a good amount of padding. I like that the padding is elevated a little bit to provide this air channel here to keep airflow moving as you're using this throughout the day. And then one thing I noted is that the back paneling here is not quite as comfortable as some of the other Thule bags that we've used in the past. It's just not quite as soft. So maybe with more and more use over time, this will get softer, but right out of the box, it's a little bit more solid than I would like to see. And then because of the lack of the mesh, it does tend to get a little bit more moist than I would like to see. So. Still comfortable to wear, just not quite as soft as I would like to see. But over time, that would likely start to break in a little bit more. And even as is, it's still gonna be a comfortable bag to wear, especially for the size that this bag is. It's really not that big, so it's not gonna get too heavy. And so this should still be more than comfortable enough for most people's day to day. Next up, I wanna talk about the laptop compartment. And so this also has a really nice, weather resistant YKK zipper here. It has kind of a three quarter opening. And I really just wanna mention again, the zipper pools here that Thule has chosen to use are very cool. They feel very premium. I like the style that they have and they're very easy to grab and open. And so as you can see, it has that three quarter opening. So it doesn't quite lay flat, but still very easy to get to kind of all the more techie and admin type items that you might need throughout your day. So starting out with the laptop compartment itself, it offers a good amount of padding. I was very sad to see that it didn't have the same felt lining that we saw in the top quick access compartment. That would have been a great addition here to help provide a little bit of extra protection against scratching for the laptop. But it still offers a good amount of protection. As you can see, the padding itself is pretty thick and the compartment should hold up to at least a 15 inch laptop. And as you can see, it comes out a good amount. So if you have a wider device, it should be able to fit in there okay. And so I was very happy to see that the bottom of my laptop is very well protected. I can't quite tell if it's elevated or if it just has a lot of padding on the bottom of the laptop sleeve. But when I put my laptop in hard, it doesn't feel like it's touching the ground at all. So I'm always glad to see that the laptop is gonna be protected from some sort of a drop. And so just pulling that out, as you can see, I can grab it very quickly. So plenty of leftover space you can see here on the inside of the compartment. The back side of this compartment does have a little bit of a softer lining. It's not quite as soft as the felt that we saw earlier, but it's nice to see that the laptop compartment does offer at least a little protection against scratching. So really nice implementation here. On the front of the laptop compartment, there's an additional slightly padded sleeve for something like your tablet or Kindle. Really like the little symbol here meant to kind of showcase what should go in the compartment to help people differentiate if they're trying to figure out how they should organize everything. And so this tablet sleeve offers a good amount of space. I'm sorry I'm having trouble showing this appropriately because of the way the bag opens, but as you can see, it comes down a good amount. This could definitely hold a full size iPad or similar size tablet. Currently what I have in here is my iPad mini two and the compartment kind of swallows that up. Plenty of leftover space from when I have this in there. Unfortunately, this compartment, like the laptop compartment, doesn't have the same felt lining that the top compartment had, so that would have been a nice addition. But it's nice that this compartment is also elevated off the ground and that it does offer a specific place to actually store your tablet. 
Moving on to the other side of the laptop compartment, there's just one simple sleeve that you could use for something like documents. Again, it has a little symbol here to kind of give you a hint for what you might want to store in the compartment. So what I have in here is just the same folder that I've used in all my other daily bag videos where I keep receipts and important papers. And as you saw, that fit in there very easily. And then if you don't have a folder to kind of hold all your papers, it's nice that you have a specific area that you could use to kind of keep that stuff organized. A nice bonus with this compartment is that it's also elevated off the bottom of the bag. So if you did have an extra tablet or a Kindle, or maybe even just an extra laptop that you typically need to travel with, this will offer at least some protection from drops if you want to put it in this sleeve. And then the last compartment in this laptop area is a smaller zippered mesh compartment which is really nice for holding things like mice and cables and chargers. And so I really like the fact this is made out of mesh so you can actually see what's on the inside. And I love the fact that the zipper will keep all this in its place. If you do happen to open the bag, it doesn't let the items fall out. Even though it's mesh and you can kind of see what's on the inside because of the green on green, it can sometimes be a little bit tricky to see everything. But just opening this up, you can take a look at the items that I have in here. The depth of this compartment is pretty small. It goes about the length of my fingers. And so currently what I have in here is my Utec wireless charger for my phone. That's the only thing I currently have in here. There's a little bit of leftover space, but I didn't want to make this compartment too bulky. I typically don't like to add that much stuff when I have my laptop in a shared compartment because I don't like things pressing up against it. And so even though this compartment is a little bit higher than where my laptop rested, if you have a taller laptop and you fill this up, there will be some pressure between the two compartments. So just something to keep in mind there. But the compartment here does have a fair amount of volume, so if you do want to put your mice or chargers in here, there is going to be space for that. And as you saw earlier, it doesn't go too deep, just the length of my fingers, but a nice amount of space. So really great job in this laptop and electronics area overall. Lots of versatility and it definitely feels like your delicate items are going to be protected. And so before jumping into the main area here, I want to talk a little bit about the shoe compartment here on the bottom. So. I really love when bags include this, especially daily bags that are meant to be used as kind of gym bags or bags that you might wear while commuting. So really nice to see the shoe compartment included here. I really love how well it was implemented. As you can see here on the bottom, it has some ventilation holes to allow the compartment to air out if you have some sweaty clothes in there or your shoes. So another great YKK zipper here on the bottom, which allows you to get to the compartment very easily. I really like the wide opening that the compartment has, so it makes it very easy to actually get your shoes in and out of this area. And so currently what I have in here is the running shoes that I've been using most commonly, so some Nike Free Runs. These are an 11 and a half, and as you can see, they fit pretty comfortably in there, but they do take up a majority of the capacity. So if you had a 12 or a 13, it might start to get a little bit tight. And if you tried to put a bulkier type of shoe in there, I would be hesitant about whether it would fit. But for the running shoes that I typically like to use, whether it be this pair or another pair, they're usually on the thinner side and are pretty portable, so they should fit in here comfortably. And if you have a smaller size than an 11 and a half, you should be good to go. And as you saw, there is a little bit of leftover space here on the side, so I could probably maybe put in some dirty clothes or some extra socks or items like that if I wanna keep it separate from the main area of the bag. So pulling that out, you can see that this is a really large compartment. I love that you can pull the lining out so that you can clean it out if your shoes happen to get this dirty or just to let it dry out a little bit easier. And then I really like the compartment includes this ability to pull it shut and compress it down. So if you're not taking shoes with you and you're just gonna be using this as a daily bag and you don't really think that you'll need this, co this compartment, you can compress it down and cinch it easily with this strap here and it gives you back a lot of space in the main compartment and reduces the clutter of having this large flap just kind of floating around in there. So really great implementation here, very clever, something that I definitely wish other shoe compartments would include so that you don't have to worry about pushing the empty pocket down when you're not using it. And then the best part is that you still have some leftover space even when the compartment is cinched down to put something like an umbrella in there if you need to carry that with you. Or this might be an area where you could store a water bottle if you're not taking your shoes. So nice versatility here. One more thing I'll say on the shoe compartment before moving into the main area is that I do like that the bottom of the bag has this kind of more rugged and waterproof feeling material. So even though the materials on the rest of the bag feel sturdy, it's nice to see a little bit of extra care placed on the bottom of the bag, which is what we'll probably be getting the, the most beating throughout the day. So really nice touch here. So moving on to the main area, the clip system that Thule has chosen to use here is not my favorite. It's not bad. The hooks seem to stay in place very easily but I feel like it's just a little bit more inconvenient to get in and out of the main compartment than with some of the other bags that have this style of opening and closing. So either the clips used on the Boundary Supply Prima or even something like the Peak Design Everyday Backpack has a very unique 
hook system that you can open and close with one hand. So this is just a little bit more cumbersome than some simple clips would have been or something that was magnetized. Just one of the little nitpick complaints that I have with the bag, but still works fairly well. It does hold the flap in place. You do have some adjustability here with the straps if you want to save a little bit more space here on the top to store something like a yoga mat, as I've mentioned a few times. Clips themselves are also a little bit of a thinner plastic. They still feel fairly durable, but not as great as some of the metal buckles that we've seen. So this would be probably one of the points of the bag that I would imagine would be most susceptible to damage over the longer term. But in general, if you're open with how you open and close these, you should be fine. But again, just a little bit of an annoyance to get these in and out. If I wanna move quickly, as you can see, I need to really be able to aim carefully and then sometimes it can get stuck. So I'm exaggerating a little bit here for effect, but the point is it's just not as convenient as some of the other buckle and hook systems that we've seen. So something to keep in mind. And then of course there are two of them. So just more time that it will take me to get into the main area. And so before I bash on it too much, it does offer a little bit of additional security. As you can see, it covers the main zipper well. So if you wanted to get into this area, it would also deter maybe some pickpockets a little bit more maybe. So releasing the hooks here, it has these little nylon loops that you have to stick the little plastic end into. So releasing the plastic hooks to get into the main area of the bag, there's still another nice well-protected YKK zipper. So I do like that there is an actual zipper covering the main area of the bag, unlike some of these bags that have this style of opening that are susceptible for rain getting in through the sides if you don't close them properly. So that is a problem that we saw with the Peak Design and with the Boundary Supply bags where if you weren't careful and the flaps stuck out to the side and you got caught in rain, there was always a little bit of possibility of water getting in. So nice to see that additional protection here. And as I've mentioned a few times during the video, you can rest something here that you wanna carry with you. If you have an umbrella, a yoga mat, maybe a jacket, you can rest it here. You have some leftover space. And then with the straps tightened down, you can keep that in place. So nice to have that additional versatility there. That's one of the things that I like about this style of bag a lot. And then jumping into the main compartment, this compartment here is shared with the shoe compartment. So a lot of the space is lost if you use shoes, but there's still enough space to hold most of the items that I typically like to carry with me on a day to day. And so the first item that you can see here is my water bottle, same water bottle that I've used in all my other videos. And as I was lamenting earlier, it does not fit on the outside. I suppose I could clip it on with a carabiner to one of the straps or something like that, but I would have loved for it to have its own dedicated pocket. So in the meantime, I have it here in the main area but it was nice that this main area is separate from the laptop compartment. So bonus points there, as it does keep the two areas separated, which is one of my big fears is having the water bottle in the same compartment as the laptop. So nice that that still fits in there. Next up, I have my GORUCK wired up with all my chargers and cables and dongles and all the little things that I typically carry with me on a day to day. And then here at the bottom, I was able to sneak in my full size moleskin notebook. And so here you can see towards the bottom of the bag where the shoe compartment kind of comes up to when it's filled up. And so as I showed earlier, you can pull that down so that it doesn't disturb anything in this main area if you're not using it. But if you are, the shoes are gonna take up a fair amount of space here in the main area. As you can see, they come up to at least close to where this elastic starts. And even though this compartment itself offers a good amount of space, it is a 25 liter bag, which is pretty big, especially for daily use. It feels very slim. And so it feels kind of difficult to take full advantage of the capacity, especially when the shoes are in there. It doesn't leave too much area besides the area that you have here on the top to kind of store some additional items. So just something to note there that even though the capacity is rated pretty big, the bag doesn't feel huge. And so next up here, there's just this very simple sleeve that has some elastic to it. I believe this is meant to more hold like a change of clothes. If you are using this as a gym bag, you can kind of stick that in here to keep it separate from the shoe area but currently I'm just using it to hold my Levitate portable standing desk and that fits in there very comfortably. But just a nice amount of elasticity here. It goes almost all the way to the bottom, so plenty of space for any items that you might wanna store in there and I like that it does come out a good amount if you do have bulkier items like your clothes or a jacket. And then the last pocket here in the main area is just a smaller meshed zippered compartment to help hold some smaller accessories that you might wanna carry with you throughout the day so it doesn't go down too deep. As you can see here, it goes about the length of my fingers. And I really like that the mesh here makes it very easy to see what's on the inside of this compartment. So opening this up, currently what I have here is just my Apple Magic Mouse. And then I also have my little Field Notes notebook. 
And then there is also a little keychain loop here on the inside to attach your keys. If you have some locker keys or something, or even your car keys, you can store these in here very comfortably. There's a fair amount of volume in this compartment, so you do have room to store something a little bit bulkier, like a portable hard drive, or if I'd wanted to put my Bluetooth speaker in here, it would probably fit pretty comfortably as well. So just a nice amount of versatility offered by this compartment here. And then just returning to the key clip here for a second, it is a little bit on the shorter side. As I've mentioned in many videos, I do like it when bags have a long longer key lash here or something that's retractable or just completely removable as it's a little bit easier to use but I do like that there's a space to clip something on. The clip itself is very simple, similar style to what we've seen in many other bags so it makes it very easy to get your keys or whatever you have in here in and out. Currently what I have in here is just a new multi-tool that I recently acquired called the Gerber Dime. I love how small and compact this is and that it just offers me some scissors and some pliers and just a little knife for whenever I need to have some additional tools throughout the day. And so even though the main compartment didn't hold quite as much as I would have expected for a bag of this size, it does offer an impressive amount of versatility. I like the minimal but effective organization that it includes. And it's definitely a great option for somebody who's working in a more professional or kind of stylish environment if you don't want a bag that looks so techy and it also doesn't look like a messenger bag or any sort of super athletic bag. This is gonna be a nice, versatile bag that's going to offer a really interesting look and a lot of versatility. So really great offering from Thule here. Love to see the different types of bags that they're coming out with and I'll definitely be on the lookout for more new bags from Thule going forward. And so to wrap up, I've enjoyed using the Thule Vea backpack over the past couple of weeks as my daily and gym bag. And as we've seen with a lot of Thule bags in the past, it has a really solid build quality, a nice style, and it's definitely a bag that's going to hold up well. And I was actually impressed by the price that I was able to get this at. So you can purchase this bag on Amazon and I've seen the price fluctuate a bit between $100 and $120 but considering the brand and the quality of the bag I thought that was pretty reasonable especially for me I was able to get it at the $103 price point point. and so for a bag with this type of style I feel like that's really reasonable especially compared to similar looking bags like the Bellroy Shift so I haven't had a chance to test that out but Bellroy has some really great designs and premium feeling bags but they do come with a high price tag and so if you're looking for an alternative to that with a similar style and a good quality, this is gonna be a really compelling option to take a look at. However, as I did mention a few times during the video, I was a little bit disappointed with some of the organizational options and just space that this bag had, even though it was really great and I love the style with the 25 liter capacity, I was a little bit disappointed that I wasn't able to fit more. And so a few alternatives that I would definitely recommend checking out that remind me a little bit of this bag are something like the Boundary Supply Prima system, which we've looked at in the past on the channel. That's been one of the best overall bag systems that we've looked at, has a similar kind of top loading style with the additional versatility of having the zipper down the middle. It has a really nice clip system that allows it to expand and contract a little bit. And it's just a really solidly built bag. And that is another 25 liter bag, but I did feel like the capacity on that and the organization was a little bit better than on this bag. The price tag is also a little higher on that one. That one's around 200 to $220. So if you're looking to save a little bit of money, this might be the better option, but that bag does come with some cool accessories that this bag doesn't have. And then speaking of boundary supply, we will actually be taking a look at the Errant backpack on the channel, which is, in my opinion, very similarly styled to this bag. It also has a top loading capability and a shoe compartment, and it's not much more expensive than this bag. So if you pre-ordered the Errant backpack, it's gonna be around $110, but even at their normal price, they'll be closer to 150, which is a little bit more expensive than this, but due to Boundary Supply's quality and a lot of the unique features that they like to throw into their bag, it might be a compelling option. And so if you wanna check the video for the Errant out, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss it when it comes out. Another bag we'll be taking a look at on the channel is the Dayfarer backpack from Farrer Designs, and that is a bag that to me seems very similar to this. It's also kind of a gym slash daily bag that's really stylish. It has a similar kind of top loading, adjustable flap opening. It has a shoe compartment. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss that one either. And then one more bag that I'd throw in here that's a little bit on the lower end of the price scale. If you're looking for a similarly styled bag that's gonna offer a lot of versatility, but you wanna save a little bit of money, I would recommend taking a look at the Burton Tinder Pack. We've done an in-depth review for that in the past, and as I've mentioned, it's one of the best bags that I've owned throughout the years, especially based on its price and its versatility. It has a similar kind of top-loading style, similar pocket on the top. It's offered in a lot of different color combinations, very adjustable as far as capacity for getting larger and smaller if you have some extra things you need to carry with you, and just a really solidly built bag that is usually around 60 to 70 dollars you can sometimes get it cheaper or it may be a little bit more expensive depending on the color combinations but on amazon they have a lot of different options you can take a look at for the burton tinder pack so 
Really great alternative if you're looking for something like this but want to save some money. It's not going to have quite the same style or padding that this bag has, and it doesn't have some of the additional internal pockets that it has, but in my opinion, they're very similarly styled and will serve the same kind of audiences very well. But overall, the Thule Vea backpack still compares really well to all those bags. Thule has always provided some well-built, long-lasting bags, and I really like the different style that they've chosen to go with here. It's a nice alternative to some of their other more technical bags that we featured on the channel. If you're looking for a great camera bag or travel bags, they have some great options like the Subterra line of bags or the Aspect backpack that we've looked at in the past, so make sure to check the videos that we've done for those out. And if you're looking for a stylish daily bag that's gonna work well for work or for the gym and is gonna offer some good quality at a price that won't break the bank, definitely recommend you check out the Vea backpack. And if you guys found this video useful, please go ahead and give us a like below. And if you haven't already, please go ahead and subscribe so you don't miss any upcoming videos. And thank you guys so much.